fact, longitudinal studies have found that suicide rates of the transgender identifying population increase following medical intervention. Over a 30 year period, long-term follow-up of transgender people undergoing sex reassignment surgery cohort study in Sweden, widely recognized as the best study on transgender issues, followed up with post-operative transgender people who also legally change their sex. The study found that suicide rates of the post-operative transsexual demographic were significantly higher than that of the general population. The overall mortality for sex reassigned persons was higher during follow-up than for controls of the same birth sex, particularly death from suicide. Sex reassigned persons also had an increased risk for suicide attempts and psychiatric inpatient care. Sex reassigned persons had a higher risk of inpatient care for a psychiatric disorder other than gender identity disorder than controls matched on birth year and birth sex. This held after adjustment for prior psychiatric morbidity. In line with the increased mortality from suicide, sex reassigned individuals were also at a higher risk, risk of suicide attempts. This study found substantially higher rates of overall mortality, death from cardiovascular disease and suicide, suicide attempts and psychiatric hospitalizations in sex reassigned transsexual individuals compared to a healthy control population. This highlights that post-surgical transsexuals are a risk group that need long-term psychiatric and somatic follow-up. Even though surgery alleviates gender dysphoria, it is apparently not sufficient to remedy the high rates of morbidity and mortality found among transsexual persons. Another study, Trends in Suicide Death Risk in Transgender People, results from the, trans, the Amsterdam cohort of gender dysphoria followed up with 5,107 participants in the transition process from 1972 to 2017, which is a 45 year period. The study found the same suicide rates during each stage of transition from those who went for a first counseling session to those who had completed transition. Another research study, a long-term follow-up study of mortality in transsexuals receiving treatment with cross-sex hormones 2011, from 2011, followed 966 male to female MTF and 365 female to male FTM transsexuals for an 18.5 year period. This study found that male to female transsexuals had a risk of suicide 5.7 times higher than that of the general population. The Kaplan-Meier curve suggests that the survival of transsexual persons starting to diverge from that of match controls after about 10 years of follow-up. The cost specific mortality from suicide was much higher in sex reassigned persons compared to match controls. As shown in the previous slide, trans identifying people who undergo suicide intervention into their gender dysphoria often import satisfaction and decrease in depression and dysphoria when surveyed. However, there's a high rate of suicide at the 10 year mark. What's interesting to note is that studies show the same 10 year honeymoon effect for women who undergo breast augmentation. 98% of women report satisfaction, satisfaction following breast augmentation, yet an excess in risk of suicide becomes significant 10 years after the implants were placed. After follow-up of almost 19 years, the suicide rate was three times higher for women with implants compared with the general population. The risk of suicide was nearly seven times higher for women who got their implants at age 45 or older.